also a thing that through practice, you reach at a personal understanding of what you are doing, regardless yeah. of whether it's Tai Chi or martial art or any other art form. And I think putting the time in, you know, it, it's not an excuse that I don't have time. I really don't like that excuse because we all have 24 hours in a day. I think it's about prioritizing as a second point. So it has to be intentional. You must, you must put the effort and you have to prioritize. But because when you think about it, I was reading up on the philosophy of Tai Chi and the ultimate goal is so-called immortality to, to reach at the level of, of understanding and connection with yourself, with your environment. But before we get into the spiritual side, we cannot deny the fact that Tai Chi is also, is also a physical activity. 100%. So what is, the, what is the physical aspect? I'm thinking here of mobility, uh, stretching, fluidity, even, even muscular strength. So how does Tai Chi, in your opinion, combine the physical aspect of the art? You see, listening to your words, I see a few aspects, and I would like at least to point two of them. So you said uh, we don't have time, and this is a good point, you see? We should be realistic. Either I want to do Tai Chi or I don't. And any honest answer will be accepted, of course, because this is the nature of things. And now, since you mentioned physicality, of course, we have to acquire, to achieve and acquire some uh, performances, some to set the body in a certain way. So I'm happy that you brought this because uh, we should, we might start with the beginning. So the very beginning is relaxation. You see, all the other martial arts or sports, or they are done through contraction, through struggling the muscle. Well, Tai Chi is done through relaxing. As deeper as we relax, as more closer to the true nature of Tai Chi, to what is called immortality, which realistically, it, it, life could continue. We will go along with life for a certain time. And, but Tai Chi helps us to really understand life and to understand ourselves, which is, you know, for me, the words knowing yourself, it's just kind of uh, something that's very untouchable or like a smoke. That it's a lot of work to know ourselves and through Tai Chi we know ourselves. But starting with relaxation and breathing, simple things. I'm just, I direct my mind to relax my leg, my back, my, uh, my core, and then try to connect with the breathing. When we start moving, we should be stable. Even if we are stationary, we don't move or even in motion. So these three things we have to acquire for a good practice, for a good pra quality practice. And the teacher will say, like you said, your teacher, uh, it's better than it was last time. You know, that's, that's one point. Of course, then it will, it will come the flow, the flow of the movements, you see? Some practitioners, they stop in between movements because uh, the flow is very hard to be, to be achieved. The flow of the movements continuously with the same rhythm, with the same breathing, it takes a lot of attention, a lot of concentration, a lot of focus. And in the same time, the mind has to be set in a meditation-like way. So we cannot put the physical aspect separately to the mental aspect, to the intellectual aspect. They all combine, they all com as in and yang, you know? It's, it's always a, a perfect balance. Uh, coming to yin and yang, the concept, just one word, it's the white is the energy, the yang, the force, and the, the black side is the yin, is the, the absence of the effort, the, the darkness, but they complete each other. We admire the sun because of the darkness of the night, you know, it, 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 they, they cannot go otherwise, you are saying? And that's why even the symbol of yin yang has a, a little dot of each color in the other on the other side. Yes, yes, yes. That's no complete. Uh, there's no absolution. And if we look into nature, that's like that. You know, things they transform in one another continuously. That's no. There's no 
only river without the lake, without the source, and that's there's no sea without the river. One they turn into another in this beautiful cycle of, and the symbol of circle inspired dynamic movement, rotation. All is circular. I want to I want to move on a bit of discussion to the martial art, the combat side, the fighting side of of Tai Chi and of Chinese martial arts, because I think for many for many of us we reached, we found uh, Tai Chi, we found Qigong meditation through a combat martial art. So well, what Qigong, do you? What Qigong, do you uh... Maybe there's a meditation for martial art, uh, but Qigong is not for fighting. Qigong it's uh, sure. for practice of the body. So Tai sure. Chi fighting is very interesting. As I mentioned, relaxation. We fight being relaxed. We just, uh, how can I say, take advantage. You see, Tai Chi is by definition and in a direct sense of word, self-defense. So that's not really techniques for attack. It's for uh, there are techniques for counterattack, for retaliation, and uh, these are conceived in a very genius way, and ingenious way. So we use the instinct of the opponent that uh, as he comes us with much force, much power. This power we can turn it against. And through speculating, as I said, the reflexes, the instincts, the, I pull the arm. As the moment when I pull the arm a little bit, the person will try to, to draw back, to regain balance. And at that point, I use all my body weight to push him. And he will destabilize, eventually fall. This is, in few words, the strategy of Tai Chi. But you see, if I contract myself, the person will feel opposition. That will then the struggle will come, the, the fight as we know. But if I relax myself, that person will go into void, into nothing. He will be more scared. He will try to withdraw. And then we can use that moment. So this is a, a short insight of how Tai Chi fights. And actually in a Kung Fu about Tai Chi, it says that the upper body, the torso should be completely relaxed. The pelvis, the core, generates the movement, it's the mobility. And the legs are our base, our roots. They need to be very strong because Tai Chi without stability, it doesn't exist. With stability, we can dance, we can fly. Yes. I have noticed that in Tai Chi, in all the videos that I watch and some tutorials, the leg movement is very stable and like, the legs of a Tai Chi practitioner are, you, you can tell they're very firm and very, they have very controlled movement. And I think here there is a balance of strength and balance, right? There's the two of them. And are you saying that is yeah. where the base of Tai Chi starts? What is more important, the base or the flow of the movement in the upper body? Without the base, without stability, we cannot have the flow. So uh, they are equally important. They are steps, progressions to be followed, progressive steps to be followed. Uh, yes. So first of, co of course, we have to achieve that stability through relaxation, through letting the weight sink down. As I relax, I'm standing, I, I, I'm perfectly straight, and then I'll feel all my weight pounding into my feet all the way down, you see? That means I achieve balance between yin and yang. I'm not all yang. Most of the people nowadays are all yang, what is called hyper-energized. They jump all over the place. They don't feel the weight into their feet. The weight is always pushing the air. So this, it's lack of stability. If I push someone like this on fall or lose the balance right away, they are unstable. So we need to, to reach and to achieve internal stability, internal as external as well, both. And then we will take the stability further into movement. You see movement has some steps. I transfer the weight, I eventually raise one leg and this leg should be completely relaxed. The weight is transferred 100% on the other leg. Then I move the relaxed leg, then I transfer the weight again. 
So I have always to, to have a perfect control at these steps, at this, and in time with practice, I can speed the read for someone that doesn't know that not, they are not familiar with all the Tai Chi, it, it looks slow, it looks very, but still that's a lot of involvement into this flow. The flow has to be also harmonious, pleasant to the eye. So I think everyone will define a style later on. So it's, it's a continuous process of, of learning. My, my experience with Tai Chi is quite limited. My, my main martial arts background comes from archery. And in archery, the concept, although we do not mention yin yang that much, we do mention the concept of the circle where you are always moving into a circle and, and accepting in your opponent and taking his movement and then turning it against him. Do you think there is a similar comparison in Tai Chi? What is, what is the most used movement in Tai Chi? Like, is it like an up and down movement? Is it a circular movement? Is it a back and forth movement? Uh, from my experience, I would say that's a movement that's called simple whip. And simple whip, uh, it's a movement that pushes. Initially, mm -hmm. it push with the shoulder. Then the pushing, if the opponent says, let's further continue along the arm with the elbow, and then it will reach the hand. Um, this movement actually speculates a little bit the moment when the opponent try to reach for us, either try to push us or try to hit us. So that will be a circular movement taking the surprise. Actually, we can either pull the arm or not pull it, but speculate that the very moment, even coming, come, going towards him, him without touching it, he will sense that something is coming and he will try to, to step back. And then at that point, when he is just a little bit unbalanced backward, we can perform this movement and unbalance completely the opponent. So as I said, that's a symbiosis between the, the two of them, the two opponents. And uh, I think meditation in martial arts uh, on the higher level, they all join together a common point. Even though uh, I was talking with someone on YouTube about Tai Chi versus Karate. And I saw some demonstration of the older Karate masters and they were doing every movement, it was interiorized. It was meditative state of mind movement. So I say there is a common point somewhere to all martial arts. In my, in my opinion, in my exception, martial arts were developed by someone who didn't have enough strength to fight someone that's stronger, that were pressing them, that were abusing them in, such, in, a, in a certain way. So they develop a system to protect themselves. This system was taken further, refined, so on and so forth. And um, so all this it, to say that, uh, yes, the martial arts, they have a common point and it's the circular movement. It creates a certain harmony even between the, the two opponents. Even so, I protect myself. And Tai Chi has a high degree of, of this harmony in a way that the techniques are not destined to, to destroy completely the opponent. But it, just to stop the fight, to end the fight, and to give a lesson, a life lesson to the opponent. So the opponent will learn something even through this being not beaten, but being defeated. Even through being defeated, there will be a good life lesson for him. True, and I think so. I think both Tai Chi, Aikido, martial arts in general are a very good way for people to reach a deeper understanding on, of themselves, but at the same time also to project a, a stance of, of strength and of power. And once you project that, that, that stance and that image to the world, the likelihood of a conflict is, is much decreased because people will not mess up with you if you can, if you can project this image of strength. And I, and I think that in Tai Chi, 
there is also from what I, what I, when I watch the Tai Chi masters, I see that they project an image of calmness. It's almost like, it's almost like, it's like, uh, like watching them perform a move, it's meditation. 